Scorpio, welcome to your November and December 2017 prosperity reading. It's Raina here. So I've been creating affirmations for each sign. And for your sign, the affirmation is, in the next year of Jupiter in my sign, I vow to embrace all the expansion that comes my way regarding myself. And this is because Jupiter is in Scorpio, and that is your first house, the house of the self. And it can be just like a general influence of things kind of broadening for you in some way. And the reason that I even thought of that as an affirmation is because sometimes fixed signs like Scorpio kind of resist change. They're a little bit leery of it because they prefer the tried and true, the known quantity. So this may be something that, but you know, I was going to say this could be something that's very good for you, but you might shy away from it because you're like, well, I don't know what's going to happen, and I don't know if I should try this new thing. And that can kind of limit your ability to take advantage of these wonderful opportunities if they come your way. So what else is happening? Well, Saturn has been in Sagittarius, which is your second house of earned income. This has been for two and a half years. So Saturn will be leaving your second house on December 20th. And some of you may be breathing a sigh of relief because I don't know if any of you felt like your finances were restricted these last two and a half years. There may have been something that Saturn was trying to teach you about the money going in, the money going out. And it's like, you know, forcing you to stay on a budget by perhaps lessening your income altogether. That might have been one way that it played out for some people. Or maybe it was lessening it to get you not to put all your eggs into one basket. But as I said, around, around the time of the solstice, Saturn will be leaving that sector, and you may see things start to kind of ease up. Uh, the sun will be here until that date as well. So the sun will be kind of giving an emphasis to this, this uh, house of the money that you earn. But actually, um, backing up, to November, and I'm recording this on November 2nd, there's a whole lot of energy in that second house of, I mean, in, in the house of you, the first house, because we have at the time of the new moon on November 18th, the sun is there, um, the moon is there, you have Venus there, and you have Jupiter there, and Venus and Jupiter are con considered benefics. They're, they're planets that ha are supposed to exert a positive influence. I personally am adverse to labeling something malefic and, and something benefic because by suggesting that Saturn is a, is a negative influence, that pretty well does not um, look, at, look at the benefits that occur. It might be a boot camp. It might be something where you have to really bring it. But in the long haul, it can be very um, foundational for you. And this is in the area of, your, of the money that you earn. And it will be until uh, December 20th, as I said. But with the first house and all that energy there, you're going to, in the next year, with Jupiter there, have many opportunities to um, sell yourself in a way that may make others sit up and take notice and this can really open up your life. So this could be in the area of if you're trying to get a job, if you're trying to fall in love. Um, we sell ourselves to others in many different instances. And you, you've you had, because um, your 10th house of career is Leo. So you have had this solar eclipse in that, that sector 
over the summer and it's still playing out for you as 2017 comes to a close. So you may have already experienced things opening up for you to some degree and maybe new uh, people coming into your life or new opportunities to show people what you're made of and this is just great for self-promotion of whatever it is that you're looking to do if you're looking to start a business and you need clients whatever your world just opens up it's a whole new cycle of Jupiter for you and then at that the time where that new beginning is of your first house you have Venus there too so Venus in your sign gives you a certain glow and I was going to say you glow girl <laughs> and um, just that that sense of uh, attraction Venus is the attractor but attract attraction is not about just pure looks it's about vibes you know magnetism and um, I'm trying to think if there's anything. Let me see in your. Oh, um, let's see, Taurus. Yeah. I the only thing I would say too is that you still have Uranus in the sixth house of work. Okay, and this is different than the career sector because this is more of just the work itself. And with Uranus being there, Uranus will be going into your seventh house. Um, in 2018, but then going back into the, to your sixth house, so it can um, it, it will permanently go into your seventh house in 2019. But in the sixth house, it's been there for for several years now, and you may have noticed that there were sudden changes in your your employment, where perhaps you thought you were going to stay somewhere for a long time and then all of a sudden um, the company closed down or just something very off the wall may have happened and it, it could feel kind of unnerving to Scorpio again because you are a fixed sign and you don't like unexpected surprises well surprises are always unexpected but you don't like this these surprises in your work sector that's where you want things to be stable and so you might have been experiencing some instability in this area. It will settle down eventually. This too shall pass. But um, that's the, the um, only thing I can think of in terms of your work life at this time that might be affected. Okay. So I'm going to be picking a few cards. I'm going to be picking two cards from that have Earth themes because the full moon in Taurus is impending and it's in an Earth sign. So I figured I'd break out my Native Spirit deck and my Earth Magic deck, and then I'm going to be picking a card from the Ascended Masters. Oh no, uh, that's Doreen Virtue. I'm still going to be using her deck, but I'm, this is the... <laughs> You'd think I would remember by now. Keepers of the Light. I always draw a blank. Okay. I've been getting this card over and over again. Flowing River. Probably because people need to just like let it be. Commander Ashtar. I like this. This looks like a space star seed or something. Call to action. And then, what did I say? Oh, the Earth Magic deck. Okay, where is that deck? Uh-oh. I found it. Done. New beginnings. Perfect. From the new moon in your sign. 
New Beginnings, Solar Return, Flowing River. That reminds me of this song. I don't know if any of you remember it. Uh, by Alan Parsons Project, Time Flowing Like a River. Everything is falling into place because you aren't resisting the drift of the great river of life. It's time to let go. You've entered a period of gracious ease and flow. All is unfolding perfectly and with good timing. When you're in a state of flow, you aren't pushing the river to go faster and you aren't swimming against it. Let go of the shore and enjoy the ride. Rivers have personalities and carry energy just like animals and plants do. From the Maoris to the Australian Aborigines and to other native cultures throughout the world, it's believed that it's important to listen to the language of the river. If you aren't feeling the smooth currents of life, it might mean that you're trying to control situations or that you're being self-critical or judgmental. The way to move into flow is through gratitude and appreciation and by allowing others to support and help you. Heed the Native American saying, it's best to ride the horse the direction that it's going. This means that when the card flowing river chooses you, you're being told to let go and go with the flow. If there is something or someone you need to forgive, this is the time. It's also time to forgive yourself and just let go. As you shower and the water flows over your body, imagine that everything is flowing into your life. Spend time next to a river or stream and watch the flowing waters. Use it as a metaphor to let go and enter the flow. And of course, being a water sign, that's something that you like to do anyhow. And, and if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, good luck with that, because pretty soon it, the stream is going to get real frozen. Really, really solid. Okay. Commander Ashtar is a spaceman. Call to action. Take charge. Lead by example. Walk your talk. Ashtar, also known as Commander Ashtar, is a multidimensional being who promotes truth, peace, and harmony between the planets. He is said to be an extraterrestrial, but appears in human form so that he can command at heart level with all those on Earth who call on him. He's part of the Great White Brotherhood. <laughs> okay, this is really bad. I was talking, I was thinking about white privilege in, in the uh, galaxy. <laughs> A congregation of light beings who work to bring healing to the world and is a wonderful guide to those who are feeling the call to bring positivity, healing, and inspiration to those around them. He lifts up the hearts of leaders and inspires them to walk their path with complete integrity. And I think that Ashtar is associated with, oh, what's the name of that? I can't think of that type of spiritual belief I can't think of it some you know if you if you know what I'm talking about put it below it's a certain type of um, meditation technique or something you are receiving a call to action being asked to step up and create the changes you want to see in the world divine inspiration is all around you and Ashtar and his legion of cosmic angels are standing by to offer you loving support. Know that you are being encouraged to be honest, assertive, and true in a loving way. You may feel your ego trying to hold you back, but know that when you take the first step, the next one will soon follow. Take some time to connect with the universe by looking up at the stars, knowing that there are loving beings of light gazing back down on you. You are not alone. Now, um, maybe I didn't connect the dots with both of these in terms of abundance because um, with with um, the it's it's kind of funny because it's almost like contradictory in a way. The flowing river says 
that you have to just go along with. Um, it's like uh, in Law of Attraction, they say going downstream. You're not trying to fight the current. You're not trying to um, make things happen that <clears throat> are not happening, you know. But with the Ashtar card, it's about call to, to action. And, um, and it really is about you being the change. I think that was Gandhi who said that. And um, I think that's just about being consistent in, with your focus and your vision. And, um, you know, it really doesn't relate to any particular instance. But I would say, like, even the career path that you're on, if you're doing something that does not resonate with your morals or, you know, with your what you believe about life, then that can cause conflict. But also, if you're doing something that you just don't feel like is a good fit for you, then that, that also might speak that to you needing to take that action to go in the direction of your dreams, not somebody else's dreams. And so finally we have the Earth Magic card, and that is Dawn, New Beginnings, which I love because of your new moon. And I just love Dawn, the idea of Dawn. When you witness the initial stages of dawn without the benefit of a clock or other timepiece, for a while you may not even be able to discern whether the sky is really lightening. The stars remain visible and shadows of the night still shape the landscape. It is that way with any beginning. It is difficult to, ter to tell where the old ends and the new begins. Gradually, however, it becomes clear to your senses that the light is definitely increasing, and as you continue to observe... The world slowly wakes up, accompanied by all the sounds, smells, and freshness associated with it. Soon the first glimmer of the sun shows. A new day has begun. This is a time to say farewell to the old and honor the new by releasing any self-imposed constraints or res resistance to the truth that you know. This is your chance to develop that project you have been thinking about, embark on that adventure you have been dreaming of going on, and take risks in initiating what your intuitive self has been telling you to do. As this prospect becomes increasingly visible and real, doubts and uncertainties may arise, but rest assured, just as dawn ine inevitably turns into day, by heeding your inner guidance, you will succeed. And again, the timing couldn't be more perfect because of the new moon in your sign. This is a time to plant seeds of intention for the upcoming year, um, you know, your solar cycle. Okay, Scorpio. Well, happy birthday uh, to you guys, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, have an amazing end to 2017. Bye.